This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More on them later. Hey guys, today I'm walking you through my whole design process for an airship. This is going to be a bit different video than usually, because I'm going to be focusing on the design aspect and my whole design work process to show you what that design process is like in action. For this painting, I'm only going to be using my dry paint brush, so no other brushes and I'm going to be painting 99% of the entire thing in normal blend mode layers. So the techniques used in this painting are super simple, but the design process itself is really tricky. In this video, I'm gonna focus on those ideas that just don't work out and I end up fixing and painting over later. Two takeaways that I want you to have from this video is first of all, to have ideas on how you can solve your own visual problems in your design process. And two, which I think is more important in the bigger scenario of this whole channel, is that you understand that design process is just trial and error. And you can't have everything be perfect right away, but that doesn't mean that your painting has failed. That just means that the design process is working process and you just have to dedicate more time. And it's basically continuing what my previous video was saying about this topic. Don't get discouraged if something doesn't fit or work out. Everything is figure outable. You can solve your problems if you just approach it from a different perspective. And that's also what I hope that this video will do to you, that you will have a different way of looking at your own visual problems. And usually that helps with figuring out multiple different ways of how to solve a problem. There's no right way to solve a visual design problem. And the way that I choose to solve these visual problems is specific to me and how I like things to look. So if you were to do an airship for yourself, you might have different results. And I think that's the beauty of design and art. For those of you who have joined this channel, you've probably already seen this perspective tutorial. For those that haven't, I'm using the placement of the vanishing points so that I can decide what I want to show of this design. I'm also leaving a tiny bar of sky to the top of the painting. This will act as just empty space to let the whole painting breathe a little bit, as I already know that there's going to be a lot to look at in the center of this painting. For this beginning part, I don't know what the shape of this airship is going to be yet. I found that it's easier to find lines and shapes that I'm interested in if I allow myself the freedom of just making a mess. Right away, I noticed that one curved line on the left of this painting. And when I thought about that curved line in context of an airship nose, I just found that really interesting and it's something that I haven't done in my own paintings yet. So I decided to use that one curved line that I'm going to highlight here as the basis of this whole shape language for this airship design. All of the other parts pretty much come and go. I try things. Some things work out, some things don't, but I kind of compare all of those design elements to this one curved line. That doesn't mean that all the corners on this airship are going to be these sort of curved lines. It's just the fundamental theme of the whole visual aesthetic. I am going to have different shapes on this airship as well, but those are more like different accents, the same way that you would use an accent color, where it's just a tiny bit of that accent color in like, for example, a blue painting. And that just makes the whole thing more visually interesting. The curved line is a theme that is running through the biggest fundamental shapes of this airship, but I'm not limiting all of the lines on this airship to be that same shape. This just gives me a bit more design flexibility, but I try not to fix elements in 50-50 ratio, meaning that I don't want to have these other elements that are the kind of like spice on that main visual theme to be overpowering to the main theme. Usually if you have your main visual elements in this sort of like 80-20 ratio, that just makes the whole design easier for your viewer to look at because they can right away understand what the theme is, 
but at the same time the 20% is acting like an interesting mix to make a blend of two different ideas come together in one design. When I started working on this, I started a live stream because I thought that I have so much work ahead of me, I have nothing decided yet. So if I start a live stream, that is going to force me to make a lot of decisions quickly when people are watching. So that worked. I don't know if this is something that I would recommend to everybody because it's definitely a lot of pressure. It just made me work faster. If that works for you, start a live stream. When I started working on these main shapes of the ship, I think in the beginning I kind of went overboard with that whole curved theme. And as you can see, I added this sort of like arc on the main deck of the ship and it just took away a lot of the focus of the piece. So it is an interesting shape, but I decided to get rid of it later. The same thing goes for this beam part in the front of the ship. It was cohesive with the shape language, but it was just a bit too interesting and strange. So I didn't like that my eye was wandering out of the main ship design to this like lower half of the painting. So I came up with this thinner curved line that is simpler and leads to another platform that is below the ship. And as I kept working on that lower platform, it just got bigger and bigger. In the end, I ended up having two platforms that are exactly the same size, just stacked on top of each other. It's a garden of two floors. But none of these ideas were in my head when I started painting this. It was just through this process of like trying different shapes, seeing what works, and when something just didn't feel right or something that I don't enjoy myself. I think in this part it's important to keep working as quickly as possible because if I had a lot of detail at this phase it would be really hard to kind of delete these parts and work on something completely different. So to keep the design work focused on the design and not on the painting I would personally recommend avoiding details for as long as you can before you have a design that you actually want to commit that time to. Because it's a huge investment if one of these parts is polished and painted to like 100% completion and then I suddenly realize that no, this doesn't work at all. I'm going to get rid of this whole part and then I have wasted a lot of time. That's why I tried to get as many design elements of this airship just kind of blocked in as fast as possible because without having all of those elements on screen I can't really judge all the parts separately if they fit with the design or not because they are all in a relationship with each other. If some part doesn't look cohesive with the rest of the airship design it's only a result of me having those other elements on screen to make that judgment call. But before you have everything blocked in, you can't really make those sort of judgments because you don't have enough information. That's one of the reasons why I find it more comfortable for me to block in in color rather than just working on line art. This way I have access to information that I think is crucial for this design. Like for example, where all the grass areas are going and how they are affecting the way that this whole painting looks. If I had just line art here, I wouldn't have access to that information or at least for me it would be really hard to visualize how the balance of those items works out in this whole composition. I know that people in this regard are really different, but for me color and composition, they can't really be separated from each other. They are kind of glued together in inseparable way. So that's why I can't let go of one in service of another. Here I'm having this vertical beam that is crossing through the main house of this airship, but I decided to kind of reposition the whole element and that caused me to get rid of the lower beam because it was getting too close to the edge of the airship and it just got really hard to read. Maybe it would have worked if this was an actual 3D model, but here it just needed to have that visual clarity. So I decided to have only like the shark fin of this airship be in place and then just got rid of that other vertical beam behind the airship. And then I ended up with going with just more grassy area on the back of the airship and decided to get rid of that extra structural clutter that I thought was not contributing anything interesting to this design. 
this is not really a design aspect, but when I decided to add color to this uh, building element, I did it by painting over the existing structure. This is something that I would recommend to anybody, because I think doing it this way, rather than just like doing an overlay layer or hue layer, or doing some sort of color adjustments, it let me have that sort of like stone base there for the color, and it just made these surfaces look way more interesting had I just done it in color in the first place. But when I decided that this is a painted element, I actually painted it on the existing colors and I think that ended up having this sort of like charming warm paint effect which I really like. I like everything that has like this chipped paint look on it. When I made these three doorways in the building element of this airship, I didn't notice it at first but the last one is like way thinner than the first two. And this is a mistake, but in the end I ended up keeping it anyway. After I noticed it, I decided not to fix it like it's some kind of a problem, but decided to incorporate it into the design. So the third one I decided to turn into an actual door, a door that you can close, and the other two are just like open arcs. I don't know if they are into an outside area inside this airship, or just some sort of like a storage room that needs more ventilation. I decided that it's more interesting to have these different purposes for these doorways rather than make them all the same. Probably the most difficult element to design for this whole airship is that bottom right corner. In the beginning I had this like one vertical column. I thought that it's an interesting way to reference the design of actual boats, but the more that I worked on this, it just seemed like it was competing with the attention of that lower platform. Because I had grown the lower platform to that size, that it didn't make sense that in that same area there are two elements that are equal in size. So it made it really hard for the eye to focus on that just what am I supposed to be looking at here. So I ended up getting rid of that massive column and then I ended up making, I think, three different iterations of these being elements and the whole point was just to kind of like tie the whole design together but just because it's at the corner of the image doesn't mean that it's easy to design because the corners of the image are just as important as the main elements because it's easy to explain what you want the person to be looking at when you design a painting but when you do a design like this having the attention to be less interesting at the corners of the image is just as important to direct the eye to where you want them to be looking at so that corner area where that wing is. I just went over many iterations and some of them were just like too high contrast or too interesting and they didn't tie the color language together. I ended up designing a wing that is kind of like referencing the red colors of the main building area of that upper platform and I think that really kind of like made everything come together in this like literal sandwich way which I thought was like really satisfying when I came to that but there were just moments when I was working on this design and then I thought like this wing is just not working. There were elements that I had done, actual details and a lot of work on. So it got harder to delete everything that I had worked on in that area and then to just start from scratch and design new wing elements every time that I felt like this is not working anymore. But I think that part was definitely worth it because I'm really happy with the final design of that area but <laughs> as you can see, that was a real struggle. The other element that I found really challenging that I kept reiterating in this design was that lower deck of this airship. I think those vertical beams helped me understand as a viewer what the relationship of that lower platform is. And then I understood that it's almost the same size as the top deck but not quite and that is causing this sort of like visual discomfort when it's kind of 
easy to understand, but it's not matching what I imagine it to be. So that's why I decided to increase it once more to the exact same size as the top deck, that you can see it as two different platforms flying through the sky. This is much easier to understand than two decks of like almost the same size, but not quite. Having it be just a tiny deck on the lower half of this airship, I think it would have worked just as well. Like I always say, there are no right solutions in design, just ones that work for this painting and what you personally judge to be more important. When I decided to have this water area for this airship, I thought back about my other airship design that I did earlier on this channel. I wanted this to be kind of like wild and organic in shape. That started to kind of give me a more sense of story for this whole piece, that maybe humans used it at some point, but they have since abandoned it and it's kind of self-automated process that is upheld by this spirit that is on this airship. And just this one small border area kind of like gave me all the information that I needed to understand how is this airship different to the one that I have already done. And I think these sort of story elements are always the most fun to realize when you are painting. When I've been hired to do design work, for like movies or video games, no client actually takes advantage of this sort of like storytelling that comes through just making the piece and imagining what life is like in that situation. And I always felt like that is such a shame. And that just means like ton of designs never get done if I don't do them myself for myself. If I'm working for a client, they usually have all the answers and all the details already thought out for me. And there is no room for these sort of like interesting discoveries to happen in the painting process. And I just think that those sort of details are so rich and those are always super fun to work on and to discover. And if you are thinking of like hiring any type of concept artist for your project, maybe if you can afford it in your budget, maybe just let them have <laughs> a bit of creativity in there as well. And I think that would benefit your project immensely if they understand what you are going for. Just something that came to mind when I was working on this. And also it just made me happy to realize that I can just make these decisions for myself because I'm working on this painting for this YouTube channel. I understand how lucky I am and that sort of work just it feels so satisfying to do. I knew that I wanted to add these sort of like spinning propeller like elements to this airship. When I'm adding these to the airship, I'm not that concerned of people telling me that there's not enough of them, this looks too heavy to fly and so on. That's for other people to worry about. I'm just focused on what I want to have in this airship and how I want it to work. I knew that there is going to be this element of magic in this picture. So when I'm working on those windmill elements, the main purpose of them is really to convey the emotional message of like flying and this mood of windy skies. What I want people to feel when they see this painting is not just an airship, but this sort of like small hints that the airship itself is kind of a character that is working on its own. It doesn't need people to operate it. It just has this sort of magical creature to take care of the gardens on both of the decks. Even the architecture, I wanted it to pose these sort of questions that there aren't any real ladders between these two parts. That's why I decided to name it a ferry, because maybe if it's going from place A to B, in the old days, people didn't even need to move between those two different parts. But those are all kind of questions that I don't necessarily feel the need to completely answer. While those are important answers for me as an artist of this piece to understand, I think great design in these sort of elements is always something that just doesn't explain everything to you, but it asks the viewer interesting questions. And if you can ask interesting questions that have answers in the image, but they are not kind of like pushed to the viewer, I think that makes the experience of viewing a design like this more lasting, at least for me. I want people to be wondering what this airship was used for and what it is doing now and who built it in the first place. 
I think those are interesting questions and there are hints for the answers of those questions in this painting, but I don't want to push those answers down people's throats. It's just there to engage with if you choose to do so. And I think that's way more interesting way for me to approach the design process rather than feeling that I need to explain everything and everybody must understand it completely. I don't think that way and I think that allows people to have their own adventures in my paintings and to me that is way more valuable than me just like pushing my own story <laughs> through my paintings. It's there if you want to see it, but also I don't feel it bad that people want to create their own stories in my worlds. I think that's more interesting and if I can enable creativity that way, I think that's just amazing. Speaking of creativity, I want to talk about Skillshare, who is the sponsor of this video. Thanks to them, I got to make this whole painting and talk about my process with you guys instead of working on a commission. That's a win-win situation in my books. The thing I've noticed about learning creative skills is to listen to the people who have the results that you want. Obviously, this is a very small YouTube channel. It's pretty much just a lemonade stand compared to someone like MKBHD. Lucky for me then that Marcus Brownlee has a class on Skillshare where he gives a walkthrough for his video production. The class is called YouTube Success Script Shoot Edit with MKBHD. Without this class, I honestly wouldn't even have thought of writing in my script what to shoot and I can already see that this is just going to lessen the absolute chaos that my current video production at least used to be. Some of you probably think that by now these videos happen on some sort of planned process, but honestly it's like a tornado except with 3 teras of footage, so I appreciate every bit of help that I can get. Sorry, back to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Back when I made the initial live stream when I started designing this airship, I couldn't quite get the design of the trees on this airship to kind of fit with the design and I couldn't put my finger on it and I decided to just leave it for now. But once I had enough of these design elements done, that's when this magical thing started to happen that I love about doing these sort of designs. I understood now what this whole place is. This isn't a ferry that is in active use anymore. It used to be, but it's not. And these trees are not being maintained by humans. It's being maintained by this one spirit on the airship. And with these bits of information, I could easily design the trees so that they would make sense within this context. I remember this one car trip. I think it was somewhere in Germany, where we saw this forest where all the trees are kind of tilted by the wind. So I decided to have that look for these trees, because the airship is in constant movement. It's never parking anywhere, ever. And of course that is going to affect the way that the trees grow over time. And somehow it seemed to make sense for me. I also decided to make the foliage of these trees a lot chunkier, because that whole curved theme is running throughout this main airship theme and it's kind of reflecting that but obviously in plant form. <laughs> Somehow this made more sense in my head than now that I'm explaining it to you guys. And after those elements were done it was just a matter of like tons and tons of polish because at this point I had already established so many different elements in this whole painting that polishing them all to the point of like being easier to understand. I knew that it's going to take a lot of time and most of this painting was done in one day where I started painting about 5 a.m. in the morning 
and then finished about at 9 p.m. But it was a wonderful day. The whole design process of this airship felt like an adventure. And I think the reason for that is once I had enough information, the story started like trickling in slowly. And it's a self-rewarding process. Once you have a little bit of story, you kind of want to know more. You want to know how the book finishes, like where the plot is going. All the answers, you know which ones are the right ones. So you kind of start unraveling it like this sort of like Picross puzzle. Once you have enough numbers on a Picross board, you know that the rest is going to be easy and it just gets really exciting. Like, by the way, I'm a huge Picross player. <laughs> And for this piece, I think it's that first curved line. I didn't have any of the other answers yet, but I knew that this is a theme that I think is worth exploring because I just felt like it's interesting. Especially in creativity, you should value something that is interesting way more than inspiration. Because inspiration is never going to be there when you need it, but you can find things interesting even when you are not terribly inspired. And if you follow those things that are interesting and keep building on it, it will suddenly turn into inspiration once you like unravel this whole new world of different rules and history. And I think that's what happened with this painting. But if I didn't have that like one main shape of that stone curve and blocking in those main shapes really quickly, I think getting into these sort of details would be almost impossible because the polishing phase of this painting takes so long time that if I just commit to every design once I'm painting it, it just wouldn't make sense, at least in my head, in a way that this painting does. Once I figured out the final version of this wing on the lower right half of this picture, I knew that it's the right one, but I had explored tons of different things that didn't work in my mind before then. And the reason why I understood why it works is because I had enough answers at that point. And that's what design fundamentally is all about. It's trying different things until they kind of fit together and have their own inherent logic in them. But if you're just interested in getting a painting done and having all the different areas covered in color, that's different. That's just painting. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not really a design process. For me, when I have decided all the reasons why the shapes are what they are, it's much easier to convince myself to work on these details for a really long time because I have already established why they are important. And then I have discovered this whole story and I want to tell it to other people through this painting. At that point, it's not a question of finishing the piece because of motivation. At that point, the reasons are the motivation. Uh, I'm just like excited and grateful that I get to work on this place. In the end, I decided that I want to have a whole lot of flowers on these platforms. Because of all the information that I now have, that people are not going to be walking on these pathways, the spirit that is taking care of these gardens, it's levitating, so I don't really need to worry about pathways. So I wanted most of the flowers to just grow like wildly wherever. The spirit doesn't care that they are not perfectly aligned. The spirit probably just cares that the flowers are alive and doing well. I wanted that to be reflected in the placement of the flowers. Somehow that gave me like a lot of satisfaction at this point because it was a new element that I was adding to this existing design. But now that I understood the whole story of the airship, I didn't even need to try different versions, I just knew what is right. And the same goes for these magical runes that are at the side of the ship. They are just one more clue that this airship is doing just fine without us. It can fly on its own and we don't know where it's going, but it's gonna fly there until it gets to its destination. Or maybe the destination is just flying, we don't know. But I think this is one question that I feel like even I don't need to answer. 
Thank you for watching this design process. I don't know if you want to create your own airship after seeing this, but whatever you design, just remember that all of these sort of like dead ends and visual problems, they happen to me with every single painting. Just because I don't focus on them in every single painting video doesn't mean that they don't happen. Of course, I get frustrated as well, but that whole process is not frustrating for me because I know that the answers are going to be worth the effort of getting there. This is a perfect example where if I hadn't done this work, I wouldn't have gotten to know this airship and <laughs> all of these secrets that it has. Okay, I'm Mikko and I'll see you guys in the next video. Go fly on your own airships.